Welcome in to the PFF NFL Daily. Today discussing an interdivision trade, Sam. We got the Dolphins trading Devontae Parker, their wide receiver, to the New England Patriots for next year's third round pick. And was it a, oh, I just lost my train. Is it a fifth this year? A fifth and next year's three, right? Yeah, I think so. Sorry. Well prepared, Steve. Good work. Mm. But the point here is the Dolphins had a surplus of receivers after the Tyree Kill trade. They already have Jalen Waddell. They just signed Cedric Wilson. So it was kind of inevitable that Devontae Parker was going to be traded at some point. And I know Patriots fans, they've been sitting here waiting. Who's our wide receiver one? Who's our wide receiver one? And look, I don't know if Devontae Parker's the guy that people envisioned, but it's a really nice addition to what is now a pretty well-rounded Patriots group of receivers. Yeah, and it's uh, it's a move kind of that I, I kind of called. As soon as Miami traded for um, Tyree Kill, I was like, Somebody should be picking up the phone and finding out if Devontae Parker is available for peanuts because all of a sudden that's a cr crowded wide receiver room that he would be the obvious man out in, right? Because he's the old guy. Everyone else is sort of new to the, the picture and is presumably there for a longer period of time because of that. Parker's the guy that's been there for a while, is on a decent amount of money and doesn't have any connection to the coaching staff that's coming in. And lo and behold, the Patriots end up making the move. And, you know, he it's kind of it's a weird move right because he does make sense in new england but is he bringing much beyond what was already there in terms of that receiving group the the guys that were there it sort of fits you know stylistically he fits with a lot of those wide receivers the jacoby myers of the world these guys that are you know decent players but not necessarily gonna blow the doors off anybody and, and make incredible plays left right and center um but I think it does help raise the level of that receiving core generally and, you know, gives New England a decent group of receivers, even if none of them is a superstar. Yeah, see, I, I do think he brings a little something different, though, because if you do look at their depth chart with uh, with Jacoby Myers, with Kendrick Bourne, Nelson Aguilar still there after not doing much you know, year one after getting signed in free agency. Look, they can tap into those different skill sets. My Myers and Bourne are both pretty good route runners. They can get open. They were, you know – two of Mac Jones' top targets last year. If Aguilar can get back to being that deep threat, Devontae Parker, I think, slots in as the contested catch guy, as a guy that you're going to trust one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. He has more contested catches than any other receiver in the NFL over the last three years. That's his skill set, right? And I know you always talk about, hey, if that's the thing that you talk about with a receiver first, yeah, it's not the best thing in the world. But it is Parker's game, and he is pretty consistent there, catching over 50% of those contested balls. And you do need an aggressive quarterback to give him those opportunities. But again, I think the Patriots offense works well because they, they generally do a good job of scheming it up. But every now and again, they run into a defense that plays really good man coverage and they just need a guy to win down the field. And that's where Parker comes in. And I think that's what it, he brings to this offense is a different option, a different style. And we always talk about being three and four deep as far as pass catchers go, we haven't even talked about the tight ends, Hunter Henry and John New Smith. There are a lot of options now in New England, and Parker does bring a different dynamic to that offense. Yeah, um, I do wonder what that connection looks like with him and uh, Mac Jones. I like the idea of giving Mac Jones weapons, of surrounding him with players that can come in and make a difference. And Devontae Parker's always been a pretty good player. Like, we liked him quite a lot when he was coming out at draft time, and I would say he's never quite lived up to that potential or lived up to the player that we thought he might become but neither has he ever been bad um right. and then when you paired him with a with a quarterback like ryan fitzpatrick that was prepared to just go out there and toss the yolo balls all day long that's when his production spiked right and his pff grade jumped up to almost 80 that season he had 1200 yards almost 10 touchdowns like that's when you finally started to see the the realization of what Devonte parker could be but now you're going back to a quarterback in Mac Jones who, you know, his calling card is accuracy and processing and delivering the ball where it needs to go. But does he have that, you know, YOLO streak within him to just go, this guy's, you know, big, great at contested catches. I just got to put the ball in the air and give him a chance. So it's a fair point, right? You have to match it with the right quarterback. We have always talked about Tua not really being that guy, right? I think Mac Jones is Certainly not on the Ryan Fitzpatrick end of the spectrum, but uh, probably a little bit more aggressive than Tua was um, or is in general. So I do think the connection will be okay. This trade, though, Sam, I think it brings up another point that we've been talking about a lot on the, the main PFF NFL podcast.
the plethora of wide receivers that have entered the league over the last couple of years are, are making it so there is a bit of a surplus at this extremely valuable position, right? We pound the table left and right for the value of receivers, the value of a true number one, the value of speed and guys who can get open and all these different things. But I think the way the Patriots played this was really shrewd, right? I mean, Devontae is going to make his cap numbers over just over $6 million each of the next two years. We're talking about a free agent market over the last couple of years that has given players like Devontae Parker $11, $12 million a year. Uh, the, the prices have been high. Draft capital has been thrown at, at receivers. I do think it's a nice time in the NFL to maybe, you know, play it smart and, and make shrewd moves like this. This is a great way to – and why did this happen? Because the Dolphins just had a surplus, right? They had four receivers, not enough room. The Patriots are the beneficiaries. I think there are some smart moves to be made from teams if they're patient at receiver as much as we think it's a very valuable position. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, he's a good addition to that New England core. I think the the key to me is I, I would hate for them to think that they're done, you know, wide receiver now, that this is it, that they don't need anybody else, that, that this is the group, um, and there's no kind of missing element, missing skill set that they need to add. I would still love to see the Patriots, you know, grab a receiver in the draft in the second or third round, maybe a guy that's not going to not going to sort of draw the the New England curse of a first round wide receiver that seems to be happening every time they try and draft one, but takes advantage of the fact that there is an incredible amount of depth coming into the league year after year after year. And ideally somebody that can fit that sort of speed element, the separation as their primary calling card. And I think there'll be plenty of those guys in the mid rounds. The one thing though, that is um, worth mentioning is you know, we generally work on the basis that uh, trades within the division don't happen, right? You don't want to trade away a player that you think is any good to a division rival because you know he's going to come back and haunt you twice a year. Um, and there was, there's been that discussion with, you know, our Seattle trying to trade for Jimmy Garoppolo. And is that the 49ers just don't want to trade him to Seattle? Because as much as they think they need to move with Trey Lance, they still think that Jimmy Garoppolo playing for the Seahawks could bite them in the ass twice a year. Like Miami just went out there and shipped off Devontae Parker to the New England Patriots for a couple of mid-round picks. That at least suggests that they do not have a tremendous amount of fear that Devontae Ooh. Parker is going to do much for the New England Patriots. You're using your old Belichick line against him, right? You, you know, Because you always make that joke on the pod, right? That, hey, Bill Belichick's calling me, right? He's got something to offer. Just hang up the phone, right? Bill Belichick, if he's offering a player, just forget it. You telling me Belichick's on the other end of it getting fleeced now? I'm just saying that if if this is at least whether they're right or not, it's a pretty strong statement that Miami has no fear that Devonte Parker is going to come back and haunt them a couple of times a year. Well, the Patriots just gave their best offer. Look, I think look, you mentioned New England and they missed badly in the first round a couple of years ago with Nikhil Harry. They didn't want to go in take that chance again. New England historically, if you go through the entire Belichick era, they've certainly missed on veteran receivers historically, the, you know, the Chad Johnsons, the Ocho Cinco's of the world, right? But they also hit on guys like Brandon Lloyd in free agency or Brandon LaFell in free agency or even guys like Chris Hogan as a restricted free agent. Of course, the famous ones, Randy Moss or, or Wes Welker. The Patriots certainly do a better job of evaluating receivers when we've already seen them in the NFL. So I think it, from that standpoint, they missed on Muhammad Sanu a couple years ago, but that was more of a desperation play. So Look, I think it was a it was a nice move for New England. It's a low risk, a three and a five for Miami. It's good value, and 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 I think from Miami's perspective here, by the way, they threw all that draft capital at Tyree Kill, also knowing that they could you know get some of this back from Devontae Parker, which is great. I think that's a good move for Miami as well. So, I think it's a, a win win for both teams. And I, I am with you though; it would be better for the Patriots to at least attack receiver at some point in the draft to get that youth movement going at the position. Yeah, I mean realistically. Devontae Parker provides the skill set that Nikhil Harry was supposed to and just True. doesn't, right? The the idea that he is your legitimate contested catch guy and he's got enough route running skill to give himself a chance, um, I guess, doesn't really offer much after the catch, whereas in theory, that was a, a strength of Nikhil Harry's at draft time. But that big body contested catch kind of safety net was the thing that Harry was supposed to bring to the table and just and hasn't. Devontae Parker should at least give them that. Devontae Parker, new New England Patriots wide receiver, giving them maybe not that true number one that everybody wants, but a very good all-around receiving core now in New England. It's the PFF.